This week's scenario is Recon from the 2015 Steamroller Packet. The scenario does not have the kill box artifice in effect and consists of a rectangular zone in the center of the board flanked by two flags. The flags can be dominated for one CP, the enemy objective can be destroyed for one CP, and the zone can be controlled for one CP or dominated for two CPs. First player to five control points or caster an assassination wins the game. Hey everybody, this is Solus. Uh, so, it's round three of our scramble. I've played uh, both lists once, so I can uh, have a choice of which list I want to play. Uh, since I'm up against Signar this week, uh, I decided to go with my Epic Lilith list, uh, since my opponent has access to both Haley 1 and Haley 2. Uh, I feel that um, Haley 1 sort of hoses Abby, mainly because I with Temporal Barrier up, I won't be able to charge, and Haley 2 sort of takes her apart as well. Um, I think it's it's a playable game, but it's a lot harder uh, to deal with. So, I'm um, going with the Lilith 2. Uh, if I come up against Haley 1, I can shoot her to death, uh, and I don't really care about Temporal Barrier. And if I come up against uh, Haley 2, uh, it's a little bit easier to deal with her feet turn. Uh, I can shoot him on the way in, hopefully blunt a lot of his uh, a lot of his hitting power. And if I can kill Thorn, I think I'm in a better position. And I can always shoot during the feet turn, so it's not uh, not a horrible matchup for me, uh, at least in my opinion. So I went with the little two. I chose the E. Haley list because I think that the Haley 1 list will get shot off the table before it can get across the board. Um, temporal Barrier doesn't do a whole lot against an army that doesn't need to move. Whereas Haley 2 can get across the board really fast with this list. Um, I just have to make sure I don't get shot, off, get Haley shot. I think that's the only way he's going to win is killing Haley. Effigy of Valor is my objective because it gives me cover. I've got a few options here. Uh, I've got a wall to my left. Uh, my objective gives me cover, and I have a hill that gives me height. Those are all things that line, that uh, Isla Sight does not ignore. The big forest in the middle of the board is a big a big advantage to my opponent. However, I can't see through it, and he can. I'm going to just move as far forward as fast as I can with my army. Uh, try to catch him in the feet as quickly as I can, and then use that feet turn to uh, advance on him. With that in mind, I'm going to set up my jacks so that they don't have to worry about the forest. Uh, my two heavy hitting jacks, that is. The storm blades are just going to run through the middle of the board. Rupert can give them Pathfinder if he needs to. Uh, I prefer him giving them, uh, them defense and uh, tough, or tough, I guess. But it is what it is. Thorn's going to go on the top to try to slow my opponent down. So my opponent uh, won the die roll to go first. Uh, which is a small problem. Uh, I really like going first with this Lilith 2 list. Uh, I prefer to be able to advance and sort of uh, set up my fire base before my opponent uh, gets to move up. It lets me, you know, uh, move up my Ravagors and hopefully put out some Skathers uh, to try and force my opponent to, to go around them and sort of break up his movement. Um, but my opponent managed to go first, so I'm going to see how this goes. Um, I start off with my my usual, pretty much my usual deployment. Uh, I put a Ravagor uh, on each side and Lilith pretty much goes up, side, up the middle. Uh, put the Naga off to the side and uh, a Bolt Thrower on my left flank and Zerial on my right. Uh, Swamp Goblins go next to Lilith and the Feral Geist is going to go off to one of my flanks um, and then I set up my Fury Management. My opponent puts out his advanced deploy, and then I pretty much put both Death Stalkers on one flank. Uh, I want them there uh, to hopefully deal with um, Stormblades. I can hit them, uh, do a point, doesn't really matter if they have Arcane Shield on them or not. And I don't think they're going to be terribly helpful on, uh, on my right flank.
Well, my opponent uh, has Ravagors on both flanks. The Naga is down south, sort of. That's that's the problem, beast. I've got to get rid of Wraith Bane, or, or none of Haley's defensive tech works. Uh, the deceleration and the uh, arcane shield from the junior, none of that gives me any kind of benefit to being shot at. And to, uh, on top of all that, he has Isle of Sight on every damn thing, so he ignores my stealth models. The good thing, I guess, is that uh, at least, um, what the hell is his name? The dude with the cape uh, is immune to fire, so some of his beasts won't be able to shoot at him. Gorman, that is. I can't, can't believe I couldn't remember that. Anyway, I'm just going to run everything forward uh, as best I can. Thorn, I'm going to try to drop a time bomb on those two hunters up there, I guess. They're they're a problem for my Stormblaze. doesn't matter what their armor is. They can still do the sniper shot, and uh, we don't like that. Hate is going to advance over hide behind the wall, and uh, TK... Uh, Thorn forward two inches, then Thorn's going to move his three. I'll just move it all at once five inches forward. Then we'll drop the time bomb. Hopefully, I get a good scatter. Uh, distance looks about seven inches, maybe eight. So that's a little bit more than eight. So I can drift four to most, and I roll a five. So it's going to drift uh, pretty darn far. Shouldn't get anybody. It might clip the little guy on the, on the, on the top there, but probably not. The uh, rest of my turn is just going to be running everything up to keep myself alive. Uh, I don't want to get Jack too close to Anastasia or anything else is super important because I don't want a, uh, tem an AOE template to whack her. Um, do an Energizer for a little bit and then move Jake's out of harm's way hopefully. Put the Jack in front of Haley to block a little bit of line of sight. Move Gorman up. I think I probably made a mistake there, moving him a little bit too close. If he feats this turn, he's, he could probably get Gorman and Anastasia. But maybe not. I have cover from the objective, so he would have to boost to hit me, maybe. Get the Squire up a little bit forward and pass turn. Right, so going into my turn one, uh, I'm going to try and uh, thin out his infantry as he comes up so uh, if I can if I can thin him out a little enough uh, things go a little bit better for me uh, during his feet turn and especially if uh, I screw up and he manages to well not really screw up but uh, if he manages to get a uh, Anastasia off on me so I go ahead start with dust dockers uh, I go roll uh, shoot a storm blade, hit him. He fails his tough, so I swift hunter over, and then uh, shoot another uh, storm blade who doesn't tough. So I get two swift hunter backwards uh, outside of the forest, so I can't really uh, be attacked. Second death stalker goes. Uh, try and shoot uh, storm blade. And he toughs, which stops uh, stops the Death Stalker from uh, swift hunting. So, but he's in Thorn's way, so that may or may not matter. I have Lilith go. Uh, she walks up and uses Arcane Wonder, and then boosts a pin cushion into Thorn, uh, managing to hit. And then I check and uh, yeah. See, I might as well take my shot at him. Uh, I might do some damage, uh, hopefully. With Pincushion, it's uh, it's a little nice. So, uh, don't really do it much to him. Uh, so, I just buy a shot and, you know, trying to plink him to death. Uh, but it doesn't really work out. So, then she uh, goes ahead and camps too. So, the uh, Bolter goes and boosts a shot into Thorn, uh, but manages to miss even with the pincushion. I have my Ravigor walk up, puts its animus on itself, and boosts a hit uh, at Thorn. Right now, I'm really just trying to cripple her Arc Node. Uh, if, if I take out the Arc Node, that means that she has to come forward and uh, start 
throwing spells at me that way. Um, I do manage to hit. I do some fairly decent damage. Uh, set him on fire and drop a scather. So uh, the shredder walks up, puts tenacity on the ravigor, and then I have the uh, succubus walk up and put tenacity on Lilith. Swamp gobbers walk up and drop a cloud. Uh, blocking off line of sight to Lilith uh, on that side. Zuriel runs, uh, trying to stop line of sight to Lilith on uh, my left side. So, I have uh, I have one Ravagor left to go. Uh, I'm trying to figure out if I can walk it and shoot at Thorn. Uh, I look at the distance, I measure my control area, and it looks good to me, so... Uh, I have the Ravagor go up, uh, boost a shot at Thorn, and then uh, boost damage after the hit. So uh, Thorn's fairly beat up right now. For, uh, I took out his Arc Node, which is really what I was hoping for. So have the Naga walk up behind a wall, and then uh, I have my Shepherds walk up and fix my Fury for me. Okay, well, Thorn is shot up pretty bad, but uh, this is going to be a feat turn, I'm fairly certain. I should be able to catch everything in his army in my feet. The uh, Thorn's going to move up, and then I'm going to shoot him to try to get rid of that Death Strider, or whatever the hell that green thing is called, and uh, clearing out a pathway for my uh, Stormblaze to shoot next turn. Um, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to get anything on that Northern Ravagor to stop him from shooting on my feet turn, but it is what it is. I guess if Thorn lives, uh, I'll be able to TK him into that, into this stuff, and that would be the uh, ideal, the, uh, the ideal situation. Thorn misses, of course, I mean, chance to hurt anything is very low. Um, let's see... So, measure my control area. I think if I get around my objective, I'm going to catch almost everything in his army, or at least everything important that I care about. Jace is going to energize her, and then move up a little bit. I want to make sure she gets far enough forward that uh, she's going to be able to allocate focus next turn. It's going to be tight. I'm probably not going to be able to get her jack completely on Zuriel. Uh, it might be best if I stayed at... at at reach range from Zuriel, but we'll see. Here goes the Stormblades. They're going to shoot at the uh, the Gunners are going to shoot at the Ravagor, and then the short range dude's are just going to shoot it at the uh, Strider that's next to Thorn there. Hopefully we'll hit him. If not, we'll hit hit Thorn, and the AoE will uh, hopefully damage him or kill him. It'll be POW 8 AoE blast damage. Uh, the only issue I have is Dice minus 2 on Thorn. And Thorn only has 12 hit points left, so I really only I need to kill that guy in one hit to have Thorn have a chance to live. Uh, missed, missed, missed. Uh-oh, that's going to hit Thorn with the blast damage, and of course, the hit on Thorn from the missing in melee is a POW 12, is a POW 14, and dice minus 2, I did 12, roll a 12, that's 10 damage, this is what Thorn has, so he's now a wreck. Let's see if I can repay the favor and at least kill that guy kill the uh, the hunter, the green dude. Um, let's see. I rolled a 10, which kills him. About 18 damage total. So the rest of them shoot at the Ravagor. They shoot it up a little bit more. Uh, about 14 range shots are not too bad. Uh, I ran the other one down south to my objective so that he's going to be able to get focused to Allison's uh, Jack and to Haley's Stormclad as well. Everybody else is just moving forward to set up for the next turn, feet turn. There goes Haley. I guess we'll uh, TK and Temporal Accelerate him. And then I'm not sure what. Do I camp for after this or do I decelerate? I think camping four is probably safer, but 
since I'm feeding, nothing's going to be able to shoot me unless I screw this up and let, let something, I guess, I guess Lilith could feed. So I just make Lilith activate last and then nothing can really reach anything of mine. Yeah, I'll put up deceleration because if I make the Naga and Lilith go last, uh, nothing's going to have Wraithbane. So it should, should, should keep me alive. Here we go. We're going to go after the, uh, the Jack. I spent one to charge. Uh, uh, hit. I get a lightning leap. It's hitting the objective though, so it doesn't really hurt it. Dice minus eight. Charge attack hits. It's a pow 19. That'll leave a mark. The electro leap does nothing. And then the last attack. Actually, you know what? I forgot to do my temporal acceleration attack. Oh well. That's going to cost me. Ragman moves forward to do his thing next turn. Uh, Haley's Jack's going to run. He runs 12 because of the uh, bond. Um, going to get up in that Strider's face so that it can't shoot more of my stuff. Garmin's going to move over here. He should be safe as long as I don't screw up again. Uh, hopefully he won't kill any, kill all this stuff. Nothing can reach the objective with shooting, so Anastasia should be safe there, but I need to get her far enough forward that she can do something. We'll see what happens. Feet turn for now. Hopefully he doesn't have a good, feet, a good turn. Going to turn two, uh, I'm affected by Haley's feet. I think he caught pretty much everything, so uh, not great, but we'll see how this goes. Um, I have sort of a plan for this turn. Uh, it does depend on uh, what he actually uh, does to me. He managed to kill Thorn uh, with his Stormblade shots, uh, so eh, one less thing to worry about. Uh, I have my Swamp Carvers go. Um, and actually made an error there. Uh, they would not have been able to put out a cloud um, under Haley's feet if they advanced. But eh, mistakes were made. I have the Ravagor go. Uh, it boosts a shot into uh, Stormblades and misses and uh, deviates. Uh, lands on Gorman, but I can't hurt him. Uh, so. Uh, go with, he has my second Ravigor go. Um, I go ahead and shoot at the same Stormblades. Uh, manage to hit this time. And I go ahead and uh, boost blast damage on, on the ones uh, that I can. Um, and set them on fire. Managed to push him back, um, and, but he does make his tough check. So, yep, we figured out that uh, the Swamp Goblins wouldn't have actually been able to put down the cloud. Uh, Shepard goes, and uh, I forget that it's an action uh, to heal, so it just sort of walks up and does nothing. Um, he has Zuriel go, so Zuriel just sort of beats on... Uh, Beats on the storm cloud in front of him. Uh, he broke his spirit last turn, or during his turn, so Zuriel's not going to be able to do a whole lot. Uh, can't boost damage, can't uh, buy additional attacks and whatnot, so uh, he's just sort of going to flail at the uh, the storm cloud and, and do some okay damage, but uh, but nothing special. So, my opponent uh, kind of makes an error here. Uh, he actually lets me go with Lilith, uh, and I spend some time debating whether or not I want to feat here. Um, I end up deciding to go ahead and feat, uh, mainly because 
if I'm looking at the distances right, uh, I can possibly shoot Gorman with the Naga. And if I uh, if I do things right, I'll be able to to shoot uh, Anastasia possibly with Lilith. Um, but it's not uh, it's of course not a certain thing. But if I do things exactly right, uh, if I can kill and manage to kill Gorman and Anastasia, uh, I think I'm in a, a decent position um, during his turn and then uh, during my turn. Uh, killing, killing Gorman and Anastasia uh, means that I'm not going to get black oiled uh, because I was most definitely going to get black oiled in his turn. And... Uh, Managing to kill Anastasia means that I take uh, Intrigue, or not Intrigue, uh, Espionage, uh, off the table. And getting hit twice with Espionage, uh, or once with the Espionage attacks, and again during their normal activations, or either or, uh, means that a lot of my army should hopefully survive, or at least the important pieces. So I go ahead and feet, and uh, I shoot a Stormblade, and now I screw up my Swift Hunter move here. So I had a plan to shoot the Stormblade uh, in front there, but when we check line of sight, uh, I don't actually have it, and I moved just a little bit too much uh, to be able to see or uh, to be able to shoot um, one of the storm blades, so that pretty much ends Lilith's turn. Uh, after trying to figure out if I, if there was actually any eligible targets that I could actually see um, and try and hit, uh, so one of the uh, the least productive E Lilith feet turns that I've had in a very long time. Um, so she just uh, ends up putting tenacity on herself. And finally, the Naga goes. Uh, I boost the shot at Gorman. Uh, manage the hit. And that kills him. Uh, I attempt to shoot at Anastasia. Uh, looking at it, it, she looked like it was close. Uh, but when we finally measured it, um, it didn't actually. Uh, she, the Naga wasn't actually in range. And then I have the Dust Stalker just sort of move over and get in the way. And uh, the One Shepherd um, goes ahead and uh, cleans off the Fury. And then I just have my, uh, my Forsaken run. And my Shepherd passes the command check. And then uh, the uh, Forsaken takes the Fury off of uh, Zuriel. Basically, this turn was uh, a lot of damage control and trying not to get myself set up to die next turn. Okay, well, I screwed up the order of activations last turn and let the Lith go before the Naga, and she actually feeded, which put the Naga in range to shoot at Gorman, and it cost me Gorman. Probably cost me the game. Uh, I gotta be careful this turn. Fire does some nastiness, but I'm, I'm gonna be able to put quite a bit of damage on some of his stuff. Jake's is just out of range of her jack. I guess I moved him. I guess I moved him a little bit too far last turn. I probably should have uh, tried to keep her in range. But I was afraid of the Naga killing her. Um, activate the storm blades and assault the Ravagor. I'm gonna put the storm blade on the near my objective in a position that I'm going to be able to get Anastasia to have that unit activate again so I should be able to put quite a bit of damage on the Ravagor. Might not kill him because he's fairly fresh but uh, I'll, he won't be happy. Um, if I'd been able to get a Fury on or a focus on Jake's Jack I think I'd have killed Zuriel this turn too but I'm not sure I'm going to be able to do it now. He's got quite a bit of hit points left. He'll get what three attacks one fist and then two swords with Anastasia and uh, that one guy that I moved up is gonna be able to allocate a focus to him the one storm blade 
Haley's gonna move up a little bit. She's gonna do some TK business. Uh, I need to get this Jack out of melee and into a position that I can get him to Lilith. Lilith's gonna be a pain in the butt to hit. But I think I'll be able to attack the Ravagor behind her and have all of his attacks Electro Leap on the Lilith. And if I get the Ragman up there uh, close enough that he drops her armor and the Ravagor's armor, I may be able to kill both of them uh, with five fo or four focus on him. Jake goes, boost a shot into the uh, front um, goblin there. Uh, my opponent puts the wrong goblin back. Yeah, I'll fix that in just a second. I gotta get the front one out of the way so that I'll be able to reach uh, far enough in with movement and Anastasia's espionage move that I can get all of that stuff back there. I want to Electro Leap onto the uh, solo instead of onto the, the, uh, his objective whenever I attack the goblin. Let's see. Okay. I guess uh, Anastasia's probably next. Got to check some lines of sight here. Nah. Jake's still done. Still not done. Yeah, she's going to go in there and do an energizer. There goes Jake's. She's got. Lilith in line of sight and in range. Haley, pretty much everything that matters is in range. Now she's going to use her own espionage to go up and try to attack the goblin. She misses. There goes this Jack taking an espionage move. This is going to be the key to the game here. I got the goblin and the Electro Leap hit the other little chick, so they're both dead. That clears it up to be able to walk over and whack the Ravagor, hopefully. Bouncing into Lilith enough to kill her. We'll see. He's got two or three transfers, so it's probably not a sure thing. Uh, Haley's going to move back around and get cover for my objective. Uh, it should be Lilith and the, and the Naga, the only thing that will shoot at her from there. Uh, moving the Jacks, still doing espionage moves. Hit Zuriel, don't really do a whole bunch of damage to him. And the Electro Leap does, not, Electro Leap does nothing to the objective. There goes uh, the advance move by the... I, you know, I forgot to allocate him focus with that storm blade that was next to him. Darn it. Oh, no, he hasn't activated yet. There goes the storm blades Anastasia move. Uh, they're going to chop on this Ravagor as much as they can. Uh, they do a little bit of dirt to him. He had he was so so f almost full health, so it, it's not, they're not going to kill him, I don't think. Even PAL 15s, they're not they're not getting a boosted die for charging, so it's not that that super damaging. Yep, he's still alive. Can't not gonna be able to do any transfers to him, however. See, this is where I made a mistake. I should have Haley should have moved and not given him even a shot at her. I should have just moved her completely behind that objective. I was thinking I'll stay in the zone, but it's not going to do me any good. I'm not going to kill everything of his that's in the zone, including his objective. So I just I, I should have just hid behind the uh, my objective, and the next turn finished off what was left of this army. Uh, it's probably going to cost me. I mean, he's pretty high numbers to hit me though, so we'll see. Ragman now moves up. I should have moved him up before Anastasia. That way, all these Anastasia attacks would have had the minus two armor dark shroud built, uh, on it. Here goes the chopping on the Ravagor. I'll punch Lilith first because I can't reach the Ravagor with my fist and then get and then put one put five attacks into him with the sword and, and four focus. And four there'll be a five electro leaps onto Lilith. Assuming I hit with all of them. He's not that hard to hit. Mat seven uh, and pal nineteens should hurt him. I'm not rolling so good on the damage, however. I'm hitting, but I'm not rolling good on the damage. Uh, it's uh, it's, a, it's a good way to get around, with this jack, it's a good way to get around a high defense squishy caster sitting next to something that's easy to hit. Uh, I just need to roll more than four or five for the damage rolls. 
There's a good roll on the Ravagor. And a good roll on Lilith. Not enough to whack her. Makes her transfer, though. I think she's down to two or three hit points. Uh, with a little bit better rolls, I think I'd have made her transfer one more time if she didn't have anything to transfer to but the Naga uh, and the Bolt Thrower. Everything else was so beat up, the, the blowback would have killed her. Uh, and I got her with the last attack after the Ravagor was dead, which was lucky. Uh, and that put Trent, that that took the bolt thrower down to not little. Let's see if he can kill me. So, I didn't die, which is helpful, I guess. Um, so going into my turn, uh, Lilith is in bad shape. Uh, my battle group is pretty much jammed up. Uh, and they're all hurting from damage that I, I had to transfer. So, I go ahead and leech my fury. Uh, the succubus walks over and puts Wraithbane on uh, Lilith. Uh, the plan is to try and uh, maneuver myself around so that I can uh, shoot Haley. Uh, and if I can ignore the arcane shield, she's only armor 12, uh, sorry, uh, she's armor 15 because she's sitting on one focus. So uh, that'll be, it'll be a little bit helpful. Uh, then I have the Forsaken walk up uh, and uh, Blight Bomb, uh, trying to kill some of the Storm Blades, uh, don't really do it. Uh, I also had a, one, the Shepherd walk up and heal Zuriel. So... Uh, the, chip, uh, the Shredder goes ahead, goes rabid, uh, walks up, and uh, bites Anastasia. I'm trying to uh, to clear a lane so that uh, Lilith can walk around, since she does have um, uh, evasive, so I can't be have uh, I can't be targeted by free strikes. Uh, goes ahead uh, and. Uh, manages to kill Anastasia so moral victory for me uh, I hate that model so much and in an E. Haley list it just makes life so so very difficult right now I'm I'm really debating whether I want uh, Zuriel to try and kill the objective uh, so that Lilith can walk around and it's a lot easier for me uh, or if I just want to beat on the Stormclad a little bit. So, uh, I just beat on the Stormclad for a little bit. Uh, I go ahead and Lilith walks up and tries to shoot E. Haley. Uh, I have the range, uh, but forgot that uh, Effigy of Valor gives you cover, uh, so we're trying to figure out if uh, if I moved over just enough uh, to get the cover bonus, uh, but we figure that she uh, she does. So she's defense 20. Uh, I'm an 8, which means I need a 12 to hit. Uh, I do manage to hit the first time. Uh, I boost the damage and put some fairly decent damage into her. Uh, and it's pretty much an all-or-nothing turn, so I boost my uh, buy and boost my second shot and miss. Even you know, even with a rat eight and boosting, it's still not great odds. Uh, Twelve on three dice is a little bit above average. So going with the uh, with the naga here. I am debating what is better, trying to shoot her with uh, just the the straight shot or uh, trying to put Wraithbane on myself. Um, I end up just trying to boost uh, and manage to hit and uh, I need to drop something like an 8, uh, a 14 to kill her. Um, and I managed to actually roll exactly 14. It was a lot closer than, than I would have hoped it to have been. Um, e. Haley's feet turn is just really crippling. 
Uh, and if you don't plan ahead of the ahead, um, you're you're going to be in just a world of hurt.